right, y'all. First time striper perch fishing this year. Second time fishing this entire year. Starting off with a Lucky Craft Flash Minnow. Uh, 20 pound test leader. Going to a, a swivel to the 30 pound braid. Now these are the stock hooks on this Flash Minnow. Stock split rings. So a lot of people say that they lose a lot of fish on the stock stuff. It's just too light. So I'm not setting my drag to my line. I'm setting my drag to the hooks, what I think the hooks can handle. And I'm going to say that that's about 15 pounds. So you always got to set your drag to the weakest link in the chain. Sometimes it's the line, sometimes it's the swivel, sometimes it's the hook. So weakest link in the chain, that's what I'm thinking about when I set the drag. So I'm going to cast this out a couple times. Plan is to fish this spot for a while, see if I get any fish. If I get a fish, then I'm going to throw out a, a, a crab snare and try to get some Dungeness crab. Let's see what happens. So to me, it looks like there's a sandbar way out there where the white water is. And then in between, it's calm. So that should be a little bit of a deeper hole. And then it breaks again right here. So I'm trying to cast out all the way to the white water, the second white water, and retrieve it through this trough. My drag is set tight. So I know if I get a big old fish and the drag starts screaming, I don't tighten it. It's set and it's set good, no need to adjust. Tide is way out, but I'm gonna try here and do the same thing. Try for fish and try for crab. We're gonna cast out, cast out the crabs in there first. But uh, something so cool that I really, really enjoy when I come out here at low tide is what I call foraging. This is what I just foraged. Look at this. I'm gonna hang that in my room. Look at that ball. That old bobber from some commercial boat or something. What is this thing? It's a buoy, right? Like for a commercial crab pot maybe? No, I don't know. What, what is it? All right, gonna switch out from this Lucky Craft. I just don't think I'm getting out far enough. Add that back to the collection. This is completely a coincidence, but can you read that? It says butterfish. I don't know why, but that must be good luck. On the move again. Man, how I would love to just find one good spot to fish. That's all I need, just one. Just one, and I can come back and fish it and fish it. Kind of a weird wave break over here. I don't know if I can cast far enough, but I don't know, we're gonna see. We are gonna see. Any fish, any takers out here? Over here, it's too rough for the crab snare, so just gonna do some striper jigging, I guess you could say. I don't know, man, it looks pretty damn fishy right here to me. So look here how the waves are breaking straight at me, but over here, the waves are breaking to the side. So I know there's something weird going on over there underwater. And whenever you see something weird, kind of want to try there at least. Kind of see how the waves are going every which way here. It's like turbulent out there. I feel like the stripers love that. I don't know, I feel like there should be a fish here. What I think it mainly comes down to is if you can get this dang thing in front of a striper's face, that's really what it comes down to. Fish on! Oh, I missed him. Damn, do y'all see that? That was interesting. It was a retrieve and a stop. And then a retrieve and a stop. Got a fish on though, dang. Oh, man. Felt like a good one. Just didn't stick. Ah! Set the hook too, he just came off. Man, it's almost all worth it just for that bite. Not even for the fish, just for the bite. Would you say stripers are like trout? They get hooked once and they're done for the day? No way, right? These ocean fish, they're way more hardy, aren't they? Uh oh, big wave, big wave, big wave. All right, I got this bucktail. Wanted to use this one because it kind of looks like eggs from a sand crab. Got that little orange on it, glow in the dark with a chartreuse tail. If I fish this all day, at least I can say I tried different things. You know, if you go home and you fish the Lucky Craft all day and you don't catch anything, you might regret not even trying another 
type of lure. So and all I'm trying to do now, maybe the fish want something else. Maybe, maybe they don't want that lucky craft for whatever reason. So really it's just for me to say, I tried something different and give myself another opportunity. So they might be looking for something else. I gotta say the only thing that I haven't tried or that I'm not going to try today is sand crabs. But that's probably the one thing that I should try. I might be back out here tomorrow to try to get another one. That one bite, it's got me coming back for more. y'all that one bite he's got me back out here again flash minnow nice hole this time i'm at high tide it's almost peak high tide so if you guys watch a lot of surf fishing videos there's a surf fisherman on the west coast called die hard fishing and he fishes this lucky craft in kalisa which is a similar lure and he fishes it same conditions at the ocean but he jigs it kind of like this at least that's what i've noticed don't think he's mentioned it but if you do this I I feel like you're always in a position to give it a hook set. So I'm just going to follow his lead. He catches a lot of fish. So fingers crossed I can replicate what some of he does. Woo! Woo! It's cold out here. It's good to be alone though. You can yell as loud as you want. Yeah! <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get something off your chest and just yell it out. Even if it's just a cough. <laughs> I've tried fishing the lure for about three days now. Got one bite. Man, really not the best surf uh, striper fisherman. <laughs> I'm working on it though. Now, I'm gonna try to throw out some Berkeley Gulp sandworms. First cast, I'm gonna use the whole worm. All right, that looks damn good, doesn't it? Well, I'm just working this little sandworm right along towards me taking it like I don't know man like two or three inches every second just real slow real real slow and not a single bite here so I'm gonna work it on and keep on moving uh, north now before I go riding off into the sunset take a look at that right behind me see all that dirt that's 100% a landslide from this soft, soft mountain. You see that? If you were gonna camp out here, like right there, that whole side of the mountain could fall on you and you'd be dead. Imagine if that fell on you. No way you're getting out of there. So, especially on these soft cliffs, non-rocky cliffs, don't get too close to the edge, really. Stay far back as you can to stay safe, 30 feet or so. Look at that, that's a soft shell sand crab right there, man. That's good bait right there. I'm gonna save him for later. Well, getting that one soft shell sand crab on my lucky craft flash minnow, that was enough to make me come over here and switch it up. There he is, the soft shell. Just gonna do it one time through his body. Cast it out there, see if anything bites that. Oh, there we go. That's a nice soft shell right there. Well, I'll let this little guy go. I don't know, it got half eaten already. Try somewhere else, continuing the journey. Man, throwing lures all day really gets to your arms. It's been about two hours so far. Non-stop casting lures. All right, another spot. And this is probably the sixth spot today. Just gonna try this out for a little bit. Just riding along. If anything looks good, I'm stopping and giving it a shot. And I never really did have too much luck striper fishing. Hoping to change all that. Add a little skill to this luck. Oh my God. No stripers, no perch again. No bites today, all day, five hours. 
I'm about to go crazy here. Huh. I don't know, I think I need to join the dark side. I gotta think of something else because what I've been doing hasn't been working. This is day four of trying to catch stripers and perch. And I've been trying to do it on this Lucky Craft Flash Minnow. I'm actually gonna start out with this again because I'm just a damn sucker. But this is what I should have had all along. A little sand crab net. I mean, if the lures and stuff aren't working, you might as well have bait. And if you wanna try to catch them by hand, sometimes it's really hard to find them. So just get yourself a really small net like that and you should be able to find a bunch of soft shell, soft shell sand crabs. All right, y'all, I need some luck. Give me some luck. Day four. Man, something about throwing this lucky craft just keeps pulling me back and pulling me back. I think this is my last cast, though. Now, this little fact here I want to show you. Might, it's not really related right now, but if you go fishing for a new fishing rod, you might find this very useful. So this rod that I'm throwing uh, lures and stuff on, this is a nine foot four rod. This rod that I'm throwing bait on is a 10 foot rod, but this one is more like a 10 foot rod, but it's actually nine foot four. And that's because the reel sits way higher on this one, at least six inches higher, effectively making this the same length. If I put the reels together, this one's actually longer than this one. So if you don't need that extra butt length, you can get a shorter rod that's practically the same length, get the same casting distance, little lighter you just won't have the leverage and that's leverage enough for me let's try to get some sand crabs baby in my little net let's see what we got here first little little thing nothing right here nope all right now let's wait for the water to go out and that's the secret put your net right behind the outgoing water and kick it up kick up all them sand crabs man kick them up kick them up Let's see if anything comes in here. Anything, anything? It's like gambling. It's like you hit the jackpot. Oh, we got one. And it's just a baby. All right, baby, on this wave, I'm all in. I'm all in right here. I'm all in. I got a straight flush. Hopefully the tide doesn't have a royal flush. Come on out here. Let's see if he folds. Come on, jackrap. Nothing. Oh, I lost that bet. Damn. Man, nothing here. All right, let's keep on moving until we find the sand crab spot because there ain't no sand crabs right here. So when the water comes up like that, I like to put the, the net down, bring it up. Just, oh, I got one. Here's this nice little soft shell, baby. That's what I'm looking for, kind of small. If I can get two of those on the line, that'd be great. So this is how I'm going to keep them. I got a water bottle. The top is wide enough for a sand crab. Gonna. Fill it a little bit with water, and drop them in there. That's how we're gonna keep them today. Keep them fresh, keep them safe, don't crush them. And it fits in my pocket. I don't know what it is about this spot, but something is telling me that I'm gonna catch fish. So look what I found. I found a big old sand crab, just one. So I got all my money on that. Oh no, <laughs> just in the sand, it's all good. Just that one sand crab, got all my money riding on him. Y'all ready for this? Oh, I got a fish. Fish on, baby. Fish on, baby. Little perch, I think. Oh, did I lose him? No, he's on there. He's on there. I got a fish, baby. Hell yeah. Oh, no. Did he come off now? No, I think I still got him. Little perch, I think. Man, that feels good. It's been a while. It's been a while. Four days. I got a little baby. Oh, it's a smelt. Oh no. But just what I don't want. That's a big old smelt though. But that's not what I want. But that's a good sign. There's stripers here. Man, I should be throwing the lucky craft right here. Throw this guy back. Don't need him. Well then, that's my bait. I see smelt, so I'm gonna throw the Lucky Craft. Isn't that right? Hook to cook, hook to cook. He's the first one I've seen say, every time he's seen smelt, he's caught a striper. Three times, let's make this four for four, as if I'm fishing with you. Is that the right color? 
Kind of looks like a smelt in the water. Let's go, man. Let's go. Getting excited again. My morale, I just got a morale boost. Oh, how low I was feeling. These ups and downs of fishing. The peaks and the valleys, I was in a deep valley. Now I'm coming out, coming up to the peak. Let's go! So one thing I've learned to do over the years of fishing, as soon as I get this bait right back towards me in the casting position, I'm gonna get it where I need it, about a foot away from my top of the line, and then I always just hold the line and get that open. Now if I'm ever talking to someone or something like that, and I go to cast, it's always ready to go. Sometimes you'll keep it closed, you'll talk to someone, you'll get ready to cast, and that's how you break off. So I'm always locked and loaded, always ready to go. Whenever I'm holding the rod, I'm always ready to go. I think I'm addicted again. I'm back to fishing. It's good to be healed from this injury, partially at least. I got the big boys out right now. This is sand trap, sand crab trap I made a couple of years ago with a $5 aluminum piece of pipe from a plumbing store and some mesh I got for a dollar. Got my big ass net now. Oh, here's one. Boom. Right off the bat. Little one though. Don't want that one. That's a good sign though. Got one immediately. I'm gonna say I need about a. Uh, about 30 of them at least to be comfortable fishing tomorrow. I got a good amount for tomorrow. That's all I need. Good night, everybody. One common problem I have a lot of the times is that my line will get tangled if I'm using a Carolina rig. So I changed this to 40 pound test that way, if I get a big fish, I can pull him up by the leader. And also, it should prevent it from tangling up. You guys have any tips for prevention of tangling? Let's cast this soft shell out. See if there's any takers right here, right in the morning. Three ounce weight. Fish on, baby. Fish on, baby. That was fast. That was a striper. Yeah, baby. That's a striper. Hell yeah, man. First cast. Got a fish, dude. Let's go. On a soft shell sand crab I just picked up. That's a striper, dude. We on one. We on one. Woo! It's a small one. Might be a keeper. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. It's finally paid off, dude. Oh yeah. 40 pound test. Whoo, hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm just letting him fight, letting him fight. Let's go, man. Soft shell sand crabs, man. Let's keep in tension. Little hook, 40 pound test. Little striper, huh? How you doing, little guy? How's it going, man? Let the next wave bring him in for me. Let, come on, next wave, come on in. Come on in, come on in. That's a, that's a keeper, dude. Come on in, come on in all the way up here. Yeah, dude. Woo, hell yeah. Should I keep him? That was fast, man. Striper number one. Oh yeah, right on the lip too. Let's keep him. Should we eat him? Let's eat him, man. No, let's release him. Ah, I can't, I don't know. I don't know, that's a nice fish though. Well, there he is, man. Size one octopus hook. That's a keeper stripe right there. Woo, I've been trying five days, six days. Forgot what day it is now, but that's a good 26 incher at least. Hell yeah, dude. And you know, I'm not really a big fan of eating stripers 
Last time I had one was about four, four years ago. Uh, it's still early in the day. I don't know if I even want to eat one, but that's just what it's all about, man. Right there, striped bass from the surf. Doesn't matter if you catch them with sand crabs or lucky craft. Not exactly how I wanted to catch them from the start, but hey, fish is a fish. There might be many more to come today. I'm about to kill it. Let's go. All right, little guy. I'm about to catch your buddy soon. There he goes. There he goes. Woo! Hell yeah. Oh my gosh. I worked so hard for that fish. Five days in a row. Got a little. Came out here last night to get some bait. This is what it is. Little soft shells. I don't know why they love them and a little hook you know you can catch big fish on a big hook you know they catch some huge trout on tiny size 16 size 18 size 22 hooks so if you play them right set your drag right remember what i said you always want to set your drag to the weakest link in the chain right now i don't have very many weak links in the chain i got 40 pound test line big terminal tackle and 30 pound test braid so 30 pound test braid that's my weak link right now and uh my drag still set kind of loose. Anyway, right there, right through the back. One time, that's it. But you can kind of see this trough right here, right? It's like pushing super strong to the left. So I'm casting all the way to the right and just letting it drift right in this little trough. Behind there, there's waves breaking, so it's probably shallow there, like a little sandbar. Gets in deep here, a little trough and it just drifts along shore and I'm just walking it along there. And I'm surprised this hasn't got bitten yet. Look at this. Look at that. Soft shell with eggs. Oh man, does that not look amazing? Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, if you collect sand crabs the night before, you have to have a fishing license and you can only keep 35. That's the limit for sand crabs per day per person. Fish on, baby. Fish on! Yeah! Woo! Another one on that little sand crab. Oh, it's a striper. Did I lose him? Nope, it's still there. Hell yeah! Let's go! A little soft shells with eggs from last night. Fish number two. That's a striper for sure, unless it's a big old perch. But no, that's a striper. Ha <laughs> ha! Let's go, baby. Come on in here. He's coming in with the wave right now. He's coming in with the wave. No, if it was a perch, it would just kind of like be dead weight almost after a while. He's right here. Here he is. Little guy. Little guy. Man, if this is a keeper, that's tempting to keep. Also, with this heavy leader, I can just grab the leader and pull it back. You know, it's 40 pound test line. That thing's not going to break. Calm down. Open your mouth. Ah, say ah. All right, little guy, little schooly guy. That ain't bad though. Hey man, I'll take him all day, all day long. Well, what do you know? Striper number two. Man, now that is tempting to try to eat. If that's a keeper size, let me get out my measuring tape. The other one is, I don't know, I don't like to eat the big ones at least, at least because if I don't like it, then I'm gonna waste a lot of it. But that's gotta be 18, right? That's a small fish, but that's gotta be 18, isn't it? Yeah. He's 19 inches. All right, let's keep him. Let's keep him and eat him, huh? Let's try him out. All right, let's do it. Three girls walking by right now, so I don't want to, them to see me stab it in the head and have blood drip everywhere, so I'll wait till they pass by. Some people are kind of sensitive to this stuff, you know? It's a perfect size to sample and try to eat. 19 inch, 19 or 20 inch striper. Killed quickly, bled really well. I'll put him in my bucket. Try to catch another one, I'll catch and release. Then I'm gonna go eat them. And throw them in the cooler. Cooler, I mean bucket. All right. So let me tell you what happened. Three years ago, I tried this striper one time, just cooked in butter on a pan. And that night I threw up and I had this horrible like gallbladder attack. And I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, at that time I wasn't sure if it was related to the fish or not a couple nights later I had the fish again and the same thing horrible horrible 
gallbladder attack. People compare it to giving birth. It was horrible. So that's why I don't want to eat striper again, but I'll try it. Maybe it was undercooked, I don't know. Uh, yeah, we'll see. Just gonna get all these scales off because I want to keep the skin on. It's gonna have a nice extra flavor. It's gonna keep the fat on it. So I'm just gonna scale it up. It'd be a lot easier to fillet also once I get the scales off. I got this super, super sharp knife. This was sent to me from a person from, ah oh gosh, I'm so sorry, I forgot where you're from, the UK. Adrian Etheridge made me this knife. Look at that, man. Super sharp. It's a beautiful, beautiful knife. He made me a couple of them. Adrian Etheridge, handmade knives. Look at that, AE. I'm just taking my time going down both sides of the rib cage. Me looks all right. I don't know, man, I'm just, I'm just a little apprehensive. It's a nice looking piece of meat, I gotta say. I gotta say, it looks pretty good. I'm just still, I don't know, I'm just apprehensive, I don't know. It's just that, that experience just got me. All right, I'm gonna cut it into just a little strip or two that can fit in my pan. Boneless, not skinless, just boneless. See, there's a little bloodline. Can you see that kind of translucent color? People say that's mercury. Well, I'm giving it a shot anyway, all right. And this is really just for me, just to see if I can stomach this again, or ever, if I could just stomach this for once. Just some salt and pepper mixed together in this bag. Nothing crazy, nothing special, just salt and pepper. So that kind of shows you fishing can be really easy, or it can be really hard, but it's so rewarding, and at the end of the day, you get to bring home some food for yourself or your family. Or if you just want to do it for fun, just do it for, for fun, man. Catch and release is always fun. So I tore my Achilles tendon. I was playing basketball. And I guess I'm just getting old or something because I came down for a rebound and it popped. And I knew immediately I was going to be out for a long, long time. It's like your whole life changes. Something dies. All your plans go out the window when the injury like that happens, you gotta adjust your entire life to it. So, four months later, I'm back out here doing what I love, eating avocado and fish. Just wish this quarantine was over because I bought a boat too. A 16 foot, uh, oh, I'm, no, I'm not even gonna tell you. That's, that's a surprise for later. To prevent the fish from curling up, I'm just gonna score the skin a couple times. Center, three times. That way it won't just curl up into a big, mess by the way fisherman's life hats are for sale i've got fisherman's life jigs and swivels and a bunch of other stuff coming up soon so fisherman'slife.net if you want to buy anything just holding it down so the skin just relaxes a little bit and then i can let go i won't need to hold it it'll cook just fine let's give this a flip everything's always so much better with the skin it looks so juicy oh man i just want to dig in i'm actually working up an appetite now. All right, I can't hold on any longer. Let me have this little corner piece right there. Little, little, just something small, little corner piece. All right, little striped bass, salt, pepper, butter. That's good, it's really good. I might have to be a little bit more open to this. Only thing is, apparently, supposedly they do have a high level of mercury and toxins, so should really limit your consumption on them. Shoot, man. If I was really hungry, I would not be mad if I had this. And I'm not even that hungry, but I ain't mad either right now. My signature slop. Just some fish and avocado mixed in, but man, may not look good, but it sure it tastes great. All right, well, I did it. Caught the fish. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'll see you on the next one doesn't taste fishy or weird at all clean hmm I could do this again I could do this again